We are in an epidemic of osteoporosis. 10 million Americans have it, and one in three older women will get it. Might fruits and vegetables be the unexpected natural answer to the question of osteoporosis prevention? Even just a single extra serving of fruits and vegetables per day is associated with lower bone fracture risk. That was Dr. Michael Greger, a renowned physician and author of How Not to Diet, Cookbook, and How Not to Age, Cookbook. Dr. Greger is a leading voice in evidence-based nutrition, empowering you to take control of your bone health through smart food choices. Today, we're diving deep into the science of bone density and osteoporosis, uncovering the dietary heroes that can help keep your bones strong and resilient. Dr. Greger will unveil the power of a well-rounded diet to explore the most effective dietary strategies for building and maintaining strong bones. This video will help equip you with a delicious and effective dietary roadmap packed with strategies to combat osteoporosis and build a foundation for a lifetime of strong bones. Let's listen to Dr. Greger. Evidence from a variety of studies strongly points to a positive link between fruit and vegetable consumption and indexes of bone health, such as bone mineral density. And the size of the effect in the older women is impressive, uh, doubling the fruit intake associated with a 5% higher spine mineralization, and the same relationship with young women too. And eating lots of fruit in childhood may protect bones throughout life, something that was not found for milk intake, as I've explored before. Bone health isn't just about calcium. There are several key nutrients in fruits and vegetables and beans associated with better bone mineral density, but does that translate into lower hip fracture risk? The Singapore Chinese Health Study found that a diet rich in plant-based foods, namely vegetables, fruits, and beans such as soy, indeed may reduce the risk of hip fracture, but why? Dr. Greger will go over three main reasons for the increase in osteoporosis. Here's the first reason. Well, osteoporotic fracture risk is associated with higher levels of inflammation in your blood, for example, C-reactive protein, and specifically a more pro-inflammatory diet. Those eating higher on the dietary inflammatory index have about a 30% greater risk of osteoporosis and fracture than those eating more anti-inflammatory diets. And a higher intake of fruits and vegetables decreases inflammation. So that's one possible reason. Here are some foods known for their high anti-inflammatory properties. Turmeric. Contains curcumin, a powerful anti-inflammatory compound. Ginger. Rich in ginger alls and shogaols, which have anti-inflammatory effects. Blueberries high in antioxidants, particularly anthocyanins. Salmon, high in omega-3 fatty acids EPA and DHA. Walnuts, rich in omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants. Flax seeds, high in omega-3 fatty acids and lignans. Chia seeds, rich in omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants. Green tea, contains polyphenols, particularly epigalacogen gallate EGCG. Extra virgin olive oil, high in oleocanthal, an anti-inflammatory compound. Dark chocolate 70% or higher cacao contains flavonoids with anti-inflammatory properties. Now Dr. Greger talks about the second reason for fruits and vegetables. Free radicals may also play a role in eating away at your bone, suggesting that pro-oxidant stress may contribute to osteoporosis. Both the total antioxidant power and capacity of people's bloodstreams and diets are significantly lower in those with osteoporosis. And how do we squash free radicals and improve antioxidant status? With fruits and vegetables. For example, consumption of vitamin C-rich foods is associated with lower risk of hip fracture, osteoporosis, and bone loss. Every additional increase of 50 milligrams of dietary vitamin C a day, which is about the equivalent of one orange, may lower the risk of hip fracture by 5%. The third reason. The third way fruits and vegetables may help our bones are through acid-base balance. As we grow older, there's a slight drop in the pH of our blood as our blood becomes more acidic with age. This is thought to be due to the waning ability of our kidneys to excrete excess acid. In vitro studies suggest a drop in pH may lead to activation of the cells that break down bone and an inhibition of cells that build bone back up. So how about eating alkaline-forming foods? 
The most acid-forming foods are meat and cheese, especially fish, and the most alkaline or base-forming foods are fruits and vegetables. Uh, this may help explain why, if you experimentally remove fruits and vegetables from people's diets, a marker of bone formation significantly drops, and a marker of bone loss shoots up, and vice versa when you add fruits and vegetables back into their daily diets. The greater the estimated ratio between acid-forming foods and alkaline-forming foods, the greater the risk of hip fracture, supporting the rationale to eat less acidic diets, but this was based on observational data to prove cause and effect Two-year, double-blind, randomized controlled trials were performed in which the three added servings of fruits and vegetables, or the equivalent of six extra servings, failed to have an effect. But randomized people to the equivalent of nine daily servings of fruits and vegetables worth of an alkaline-forming compound, and you do see a significant increase in bone volume and density in the spine, hip, and throughout the whole body. And so what foods are best for combating osteoporosis? feeding rats dozens of different foods. The fruit found to preserve their bones the best was the prune, and the leading vegetable was the onion. Tell us about onions. So, should we go out of our way to include these specific fruits and vegetables in our diet? Normally, we're just left with a can't-hurt shrug, but a group of New Zealand researchers put together a randomized controlled trial to find out. They developed the Scarborough Fair diet, named for the presence of presumptive bone-protecting herbs, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme from the song popularized by Simon and Garfunkel. The diet included prunes, onions, and tomatoes. They compared that to a diet similarly packed with nine or more servings of fruits and vegetables, but ones that were not suspected as having particularly skeleton-saving properties. Markers of bone turnover were measured after three months, and the specially concocted diet of bone-preserving produce did no significantly better than the diet packed with non-bone-preserving produce, or a diet with just six servings of fruits and veggies a day, suggesting that the focus should just be on stuffing your face with fruits and vegetables of any stripe. Hey, after explaining the effects of free radicals, Dr. Greger will reveal some incredible information about prunes. The underlying mechanism in postmenopausal osteoporosis is an imbalance between bone cessation and bone formation, and oxidative stress may play a role in this balance. Uh, there are two types of bone cells, the bone-forming osteoblasts and the bone-dismantling osteoclasts. Osteoblasts are continually laying down new bone, while osteoclasts chisel away old bone, and they use free radicals as the molecular chisel to chip away our bone. Too many free radicals in our system, though, may lead to excessive bone breakdown. Antioxidant defenses appear markedly decreased in osteoporotic women. Elderly osteoporotic women were found to have consistently lower levels of all natural antioxidants tested. Because excessive free radicals may contribute to bone loss, it's important to elucidate the potential role antioxidant-rich fruits play in mitigating the bone loss that leads to the development of osteoporosis. The thought is that fruits upregulate the bone building cells and downregulate the bone eating cells, tipping the balance towards greater bone mass. So let's put a fruit to the test. Uh, which one are we going to pick? Well, dried plums were chosen because they have among the highest antioxidant ranking among commonly consumed fruits and vegetables, and because the researchers scored a grant from the California Dried Plum Board. When you think of prunes, you think of bowels, not bones, but over a decade ago, researchers at Oklahoma State tried giving a dozen prunes a day to a group of postmenopausal women using a dozen dried apple rings as a control. After three months, only the subjects who consumed the prunes had significant elevations in an enzyme marker of bone formation, although prunes didn't seem to affect markers of bone breakdown. So, Prunes may help more with building bones than preventing bone loss, though the reverse was found with almonds, so maybe a little prune-almond trail mix is in order. While this bump in bone formation indices one might expect um, with this uh, improvement, uh, one might expect if they did a longer study, we would actually see an impact on bone mineral density. And nine years later, just such a study was done. 
12 months on dried plums versus apples, and both dried fruit regimens appeared to have bone protective effects, though the prunes seemed to work better in the arm bone and spine. So the dried plum marketing board wants everyone to know that dried plums are the most effective fruit in both preventing and reversing bone loss. Uh, but only two fruits have ever been tested, plums and apples. But if this uh, does pan out for other plants, a fruit and vegetables approach may provide a very sensible and natural alternative therapy for osteoporosis treatment, one that is likely to have numerous additional health-related benefits. All we have to do is convince people to actually do it. And how about tomatoes? The tomato story starts out like the onion story. There's epidemiological support. In the Framingham osteoporosis study, higher intakes of lycopene, the red pigment in tomatoes, were associated with protection against bone loss in older men and women over a period of four years, as well as protection against hip fractures over 17 years. Perhaps this helps explain why studies show that an increased adherence to a more Mediterranean-style diet is associated with about 20% fewer hip fractures. Then there's laboratory evidence. Lycopene inhibits bone loss in a petri dish and preserves bone mass in rats. However, so does green tomato extract, which is richer in compounds such as tomatine rather than lycopene, so maybe there are multiple protective factors in tomatoes? Anyway, let's feed people some tomato products and see what happens. Postmenopausal women randomized to lycopene in the form of a cup and a third of regular tomato juice a day experienced a significant reduction in a marker of bone loss by month two. And the opposite was found after just a month of restricting lycopene consumption. So no tomatoes, watermelon, or other red fruits like pink grapefruit. This suggests that just regular dietary intakes are protective. But does this translate into retaining significantly more bone over time? Postmenopausal women, given about two-thirds of a cup of tomato sauce a day for three months, suffered significantly less bone loss than those in an age-matched group who didn't, though it does not appear that the study subjects were assigned randomly, which could bias the results. And so, what does the... So, should we go out of our way to include these specific fruits and vegetables in our diet? Normally, we're just left with a can't-hurt shrug, but a group of New Zealand researchers put together a randomized controlled trial to find out. They developed the Scarborough Fair diet, named for the presence of presumptive bone-protecting herbs, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme from the song popularized by Simon and Garfunkel. The diet included prunes, onions, and tomatoes. They compared that to a diet similarly packed with nine or more servings of fruits and vegetables, but ones that were not suspected as having particularly skeleton-saving properties. Markers of bone turnover were measured after three months, and the specially concocted diet of bone-preserving produce did no significantly better than the diet packed with non-bone-preserving produce, or a diet with just six servings of fruits and veggies a day, suggesting that the focus should just be on stuffing your face with fruits and vegetables of any stripe. And so, remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.